Welcome to the Capital Sage Podcast. We're here to bring you advice and tips from seasoned pros and experts to help you improve your business. I'm Carl Barham with Transworld Business Advisors of Atlanta Petri. And my co-host is Rico Figliolini with Mighty Rockets Digital Marketing and the publisher of the Petri Corner Magazine. Hey, Rico, how are you doing today? Hey, Carl. Good, thanks. Why don't you introduce our sponsor? Sure, let's do that. They are a major supporter of the podcast and the family of podcasts, plus an advertiser in Pastry Corners Magazine. So that's always good. They're promoting a one-year free business and internet phone service. So if you're looking to get great stimulus plan, this is a great stimulus plan from Hargrave Fiber. They're the largest Southeast company providing internet service, fiber optics, and support as far as business packages to their uh, community of businesses from small to enterprise size. They can bundle it. They can give you solutions to what you need. And uh, essentially, they're not the cable guy. So they're right in the community that they feed into. So they're in Peachtree Corners, for example. So if you need someone out there, they will be out there. So they're, they're a great company to work with. And uh, they've been a great supporter of the city, actually and a uh, partner in the Curiosity Lab at Peachtree Street Corners as well. So check them out, hargravefiber.com, or you could go to hargrave.com forward slash business. Fabulous. Well, thank you for that, Rico. Um, sure. Well, as we start into a new year, 2021 is here, and the Capital Sage is in our third year now um, sharing advice and tips from, from business owners and subject matter experts that really focuses on helping the small business owner and entrepreneurs be be more successful in their business. And I am honored and pleased today to, to welcome our guest, Brian Solka of Provisis Partners. And he's also an EOS implementer, which we'll tell you a little bit about what that is. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about how small business owners and entrepreneurs can set goals for 2021 after a really crazy 2020, um, 2020 for a lot of people. And we'll talk a little bit about the entrepreneur's operating system, uh, a tool and a methodology that helps um, many small business owners be successful in their organization. Hey, Brian, how are you doing? Hey, Carl. Hey, Rico. Thanks for what you guys are doing. I listened to your podcast and the content you push out has uh, really helped our um helped our community. So thank you, guys. Well, we appreciate it. Why don't we start a little bit about, you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and tell us a little bit about how Provisus Partners helps um, small business owners. Uh, my background is I started off as an engineer, software engineer, did that for a while, always was addicted to entrepreneurship, small companies, I've done four of them, uh, worked my way into a uh, the food import business where I was COO of a food import business for uh, five and a half years, the largest frozen fruit import business in the country. Um, and when I did that, I, that pushed me into new envelopes, new lessons. And so I walked out of that after we exited the company, we sold the company and uh, I had a tool belt full of all sorts of weapons on how to run an organization. And I was equipped to go into the world and use all those. And uh, then I ran into uh, EOS, which is a simplified template for all of those tools that I had developed. And now I teach EOS to entrepreneurs who want to get the most out of their business. Well, we've got to start off by explaining what is EOS for folks that may not be familiar with it and how does it help business owners be successful? Well, thanks for the question. EOS or the entrepreneur operating system is not software. Everybody thinks it's software, it's not. It's a collection of best practices, and free tools that business owners can use to improve the vision of their company, improve traction or accountability, and improve the health of their leadership team and their own company. So those three things are what we focus on. And with the tools and the best practices, we show businesses how to effectively run their business. It's, a, it's almost like a paint by colors approach to running an organization. One of the fabulous things is there's many large companies and, and many of the listeners may be familiar with from General uh, Electric to um, um, General Motors or Delta. They all have these business operating systems that they often will talk about on their earning calls that help them drive 
um, consistency. They may have an operation in China and in France and in the U.S., but there's a core set of beliefs, values, systems, tools that they use to run these businesses. This this looks like something that could be done at a local level for for business owners help help them access some of that those, those systems and tools, but on a scale that's smaller. That makes sense. So um, just like uh, you sitting in the podcast booth over there was reserved to radio professionals that had multiple degrees in radio communications, we are now in an environment where we have access to you and you have added value to us because um, the the barrier to that has, uh, has decreased. So yeah, th these secrets are no longer secrets for GM and these top tier companies. They're available and uh, smaller entrepreneurs should be using them. They're out there and they're free. Well, I'll tell you one thing that I learned. Um, at one point, um, I, I would visit businesses probably in a given year as many as 50, 50 businesses. And businesses that implemented something like this would show consistent productivity gains and profitability gains in their business year over year. At one point, probably 10 years ago, the last time I looked at the data, they would get 7% 7, 7 to 15% profitability improvement by just implementing standard sets of tools throughout their organization. So anybody that can get an extra 7 to 10% to the bottom line by implementing some of these tools would, would absolutely um, be, be, be good for them and for their, for their team. So why don't we start off with, um, you know, this time of year when we're coming into January, everyone um, finished out last year and they're recovered after the holidays um, and they start thinking about goal setting. Um, what should the should business owners be doing and focusing on any guidance around that? How should they be spending their Januaries? Um for those who have already done their goal setting, and you know, when we talk about goal setting, I love the topic. Uh, we talk about personal goals, things that we do at home. Maybe you sit down with the spouse and write down our, our our financial goals or our goals about the family, and then we talk about our company goals. What I'd love to focus on is the company goals portion of that. And um, when I look at entrepreneurs and I talk to them every day, just like you do. Um, I, I've come to the conclusion that there are four, and I'm not going to call them four mistakes, but I'll call them four omissions that maybe people are not taking the most advantage of. And because of that, um, I think they're leaving money on the table. I think they're leaving their opportunities floating out there. Um, and those four things I'll go ahead and tell you, because we believe in leading with value first. And so I'll go ahead and tell you what those four things are. Number one is they don't look at it, but once a year. They uncover it and dust it off once a year. And that's when they're like, oh, yeah, look at this. We, we surprised or we exceeded or we under, under uh, exceeded. Um, number two is that they don't put it into context, right? And what I mean by that is when you run into like what happened last year, you look at your one-year goal and you say, this is my one-year goal. If you're not looking at your three-year goal or your 10-year goal or why you created your company or what your core values are. If you're just looking at that one value, that one goal, then it's too easy to sit back and say, it's over with, we're gonna change change directions. Those goals no longer value, valid. So they don't look at it in context of their other goals. Um, number three is that um, they're not always effective at sharing the goals with the rest of the company. If you're over 10 employees big, your goals need to be out there and you need to be reviewing them every quarter and you need to be reminding people every week, these are the goals that we're going after and here's how we're going to do it. If you put it, if, if you sit into a room with your leadership team and you come up with these great goals and you put them on a shelf <laughs> and you don't fully communicate them, then you're doing two disservices. Number one to yourself because you're living with goals that not everybody's bought into. And that's what we call in my world, we call hallucination, right? You don't have your company completely engaged and pushing on forward with it. Um, and number two is that the other team gets surprised when you meet the goals or don't meet the goals, they get surprised by them. So it's constant reminding and constant communication. Um, and number four is it's not baked into the culture, right? If you come up with these great goals and it really identifies who you are, why would you not yell it to the world? Why would you not start changing your hiring practices to attract people 
that get you to your goal? And why are your employees that are sitting there at their desk every day working on your goals, why are they not attracting their friends who are talented, who could help you with reach your goals? So I think when I talk to entrepreneurs, I see those as the four things that people are leaving on the table when it comes to goal setting. So I'm not saying that they're doing it wrong. What I'm saying is, is that there may be opportunity to help. Um, some of my, my mentors in business, um, I, I, they did all of those four things and it was baked into how they do it. And there's often a time where um, I had three conversations this week about people are in their strategic planning meeting and they're, they're meeting with their leaders. They're coming up with goals. Um, they're figuring it out. Um, but I, I've often seen where sometimes they can forget to tell people <laughs> They may not give kind of context. Sometimes um, someone says uh, for inside of a company, a secret strategy is is a bad thing. Uh, if you don't engage people in whatever the strategy of your business, how do you get everyone that are making independent decisions every single day pulling in the same direction? Um, it's understandable you may keep the strategy out of competitors' hands, but in inside the company, figuring out the right information to share with people through goals and others is often really successful. Yeah, I love that. So we've got some tools and some techniques. And before we leave today, I would love to uh, share, I've got a gift for your listeners. It's a free, it's a free document. It's, I didn't create it. My organization, US Worldwide created it, but it helps do a little bit of what you're talking about, which is the communication portion of it, right? But it also helps keep people's goals in perspective. And um, that helps with a little bit of the impulsiveness and the the shiny object syndrome, you know, where everybody sees something new and then all of a sudden, let's change direction. It helps with that a little bit. And so if we have time, I'd love to go through that document and I'm happy to give that out to anybody. Thing. Um, I'm curious if I could ask a little bit about the, the context that a lot of business owners find themselves in. Last year was a really tough year for many people and in and, and, and one way or the other um, caused them to have to get into immediate survival mode or containment mode for their business. And some for the good, um, their business grew really fast and they had to react to that. Some for the bad, they had to conserve and, and it might have shrunk a little bit. Um, when you see business owners that are going through that type of, you know, some are excited that it's past, some are, are, are fearful for the future, um, how do they start to figure out where does goals fit in the context of a, after a crazy year like last year? Yeah, I think, um, I think the two classes, and I think you nailed it, the two classes of entrepreneurs right now are sitting here in January of 2021, and they're either excited because they survived last year and vaccines are coming out and they think that, wow, this is going to be our opportunity. We had great growth last year. We're excited about that. Um, and then the other side is that they're overwhelmed and maybe because they lost sight of what they were doing or their best practices. And so those, those are the two different ones. And even though they're coming from two different places, the, the recommendation would be the same recommendation. That is, look at why you started this company, where you have been, make tweaks along the way. And when you're resetting your goals, don't forget about why you started the business to begin with. That, that's not changing, right? Um, and that's the that's the advice you give either either side of that equation. Well, I love that. If, if you think about it, you, you started talking about kind of vision and purpose and, 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 and those types of things to kind of center be your North Star for your business. When you start looking at, you know, what's happening in a more tactical level, what are some of the things that they can do to help them crystallize what needs to get done, um, you know, within the year? So um, there's a couple things. Number one is make sure that you've got the fundamentals of your business down. You don't need to, when you're going through a pandemic and having to figure out how to ramp up production, you don't need to be saying, let's have a meeting this time. And can you have a meeting next week at this time and scheduling? We should have standing meetings. Those meetings, those are the fundamentals, right? Those are the, here's your meeting time. This is when we're going to cover the topics, right? So go ahead and knock out the fundamentals. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest things. Go ahead and get, get those and just grab those and hold on to those. 
So I'm, I'm also noticing a lot of business owners are frustrated um, right now. They're, um, what advice would be, you know, they don't see a way out of whatever situation they're in at, in the immediate. What's some of the first steps someone could feel if they've had this business, they've liked it, but they're really frustrated with whether financial performance of the business, operational performance, or, or in general, they don't, they don't feel that it's meeting their expectation. Where do they, where do they start? So the, uh, a good place to start is to think about why you created the business. You know, entrepreneurs, and, and it's not just entrepreneurs, it's all of us, we're programmed, we're pre-wired to think about a, a problem and then put it right next to a solution, right? So here's the problem that I'm experiencing. Here's the solution that's going to fix that, right? And if you look at each problem and each solution at a micro level like that, you become overwhelmed by the amount of things that you have to accomplish in order to be able to look at the overall larger picture, right? So my advice would be take a day, take your leadership team, go off site, look at your business as a box, get outside of the box, and start looking at your business as a business and not focused on the what needs to be done in order to change individual things about your, inside your business. There's lots of expertise out there that can help with marketing, leadership, finances, I mean, inventory control. I mean, you can hire experts for any sort of acute pain that you have. What you really need is the vision of where do we need to be focused on that? And you can't do that inside the office you got to be able to get outside the office. You got to be able to think about your business as a, outside the box and look at it objectively. And when you do that, you'll start putting things into perspective. It's too easy to get overwhelmed. You, you often hear people talk about um, business leaders should learn how to work on their business, not in their business. Recently, I talked to another local business owner, um, Barry Adam, and uh, Barry Adams about this, and he he described his evolution of going from working in his business to working on his business. What are some of the challenges that prevent people from doing that? Number one, number two, what's that first step for someone that, that just doesn't get it? How can they start to see the difference between in and on the business? Um, so some of the best books on this, you know, E-Myth describes this pretty well. And E-Myth talks about what caused you to start your business in the first place. And in a lot of cases, it's because they're a technician. They were really good at something. And so they started a company doing what they're really good at, right? That's focusing on the skill side of things. What we want to do is we don't want to focus on the skill, but we want to take that approach or that mindset on scaling the business. The book goes on to continue talking about, uh, you know, Ray Kroc and McDonald's. And how did Ray Kroc turn McDonald's into the hugest franchise, you know, we know today. And the, um, the way he did it is he looked at each one of the steps as an opportunity for improvement. And so his, his art was not perfecting or creating a hamburger or making the best hamburger bun, but was actually making it to where that was the same hamburger was made in Atlanta that was made in New York that was made. It, it's the scaling problem, right? That was where he focused his attention. And so he was crystal clear about where his passion was. It was on making good food, but then also making it to where it could scale. Right. And once he knew what that vision was and he knew how to latch onto that, he could communicate that. And then his, his creation wasn't the hamburger. It was the franchise model. Right. And the franchise model scaled so great because he saw an opportunity to use the, the hamburger as a vessel. It's really just a vessel or a vehicle to transport this new idea. And the new idea was how do we scale a business? And it's real selling thing was you could say real estate, but his real selling thing was uh, the franchise model. Yep. It, it's funny that you say that because when, a lot of entrepreneurs that start off as the technician, the operator, they love doing a thing. There's a couple of evolutions that happen in the cycle of a business. There's the founder and kind of getting things started, the creative piece of figuring it out. And then once the business starts taking traction, profitable, growing, there's a different skill set that's needed um, to scale a business. In that case is how do you set up the system, the talent, 
to scale a business and multi replicate what's being successful in one location. Then there's another piece that starts looking at kind of broadly an industry or, or new new sandboxes to play in. But I find that the the talents and knowledge and experiences in each phase differ. How does a business owner recognize and learn how to move through those phases? And what if they can't make the leap? Um, when I talk to law offices that are trying to make this leap, and law offices are great because lawyers are smart, right? They're really good. Um, they're really good at details, which sometimes lends themselves to not delegating very well because they don't trust the details that someone else is putting in there, right? So scaling a business like that is particularly challenging, right? And one thing that I say when, you know, when I talk to, to lawyers is while you were spending all your nights at law school at books, I was spending them in business school learning how to scale and solve the problems that you're forcing right you're you're facing right now. So just like you wouldn't um, you know hire uh, you know do your own taxes at a certain level, you, you would hire a professional for that. You wouldn't sell, I wouldn't sell my own business. I would hire someone like you to go out because you know how to get the best value, the best price, you know how to handle the negotiations. I would hire an expert for that. When you talk about how to scale your business and how to ramp it up to the next level, you want you want a coach or you want to guide someone. You want someone to help guide you who's done that before. And that's what um, that's when a lot of times when people get frustrated, they hit that glass ceiling, you know, they run into it, they run into the glass ceiling, they move it a little bit further and then break into the next glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, it's the frustrated entrepreneurs that reach out. And those are the ones that are that, that say, hey, how do I um, how do I get past this glass ceiling? And then when you look at that, you say, oh, it's not just the glass ceiling. Let's Let's refocus and ask, why are you actually starting the business? And that's where the fun starts. Brian, can I ask you something? Do you see a difference between the small business owner, the person that owns, let's say, a company with under 10 employees, and then the larger business owners, 100, 200 employees? Because there's an ego involved. And sometimes that ego is a little big or bigger, depending on the size of the company or, or on the person, I guess. So how do you deal with that? You know, how, how can you work with that? Because the ego can get in the way, I'd imagine. Yeah. So um, ego is coached by a couple of things. Number one is uh, when we go through our classes, we, we show them, uh, we teach the entrepreneurs who are still in charge of their business, hey, let's make data-driven decisions. Let's not make decisions based off of egos or opinions, right? That takes some of the, some of the uh, bite out of it. Um, and number two is the meetings that we have, they're very focused and they're very specific. And when we do, we say, there's no politicking in here. If you're going to say something, you get to say it once. If you got a perspective, you get to say it once. You can't say it twice because that's politicking, right? So we, you have to train the culture out of it. Um, and you do it through the small little examples like that. Um, when you get above, your example was really good because you, you, you stopped it at about 200. Yeah. When you get into the 500 range that's when uh it's no longer uh egos as much as it is politics right <laughs> people's yeah. jobs are on the line for that that's not their ego that's their livelihood right and that's right. when the problem becomes more complex and that's when you know some carl you were mentioning some of the uh the larger scale systems that ge has and all those you know the ge way um that's when those may be appropriate for those types of companies yeah, I, I think I think the the that ego part um, is one of the things that prevents people from breaking through. Um, knowing what they're good at, and knowing what others are good at, and knowing when to delegate things, and when to hone in on the things that they need to hone in on. But this is the problem of scale. This is the problem of growth that happens with a lot of business owners, and why it's important. I like to I like to think of this in the context of um, in, in sports. The most teams have some form of a coach on the team. The coach isn't the job to throw the ball or to kick the ball or to shoot the ball. He's to get everybody to play their positions at the best they can, implement the strategy to help them win. And there's a point where business owners need to start putting more of the coach hat on than than being a player. The question is, who teaches a coach? <laughs> who helps right. the coach learn how to be a great coach? Because 
you might have been great at whatever it is you make or sell or whatever your business is, but did you ever get training on being a coach? You know, Bill Parts, uh, Bill, Bill Belichick, I think, worked under Bill Parcell, Parcells for a lot of years before he became a Hall of Fame coach. So um, finding those right types of people are, are, are really, really important um, for business owners if they want to grow and scale. I, I well, love I, your comment. I love your comment, right? So how do you build a coach and how do you make them get there quick? Because there's opportunity cost in figuring it out along the way, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, I know there, there, there's a lot more we can continue to talk about uh, around this, but I'd like to, 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 to land on, 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 on this question for you. So in 2021, seeing what you've seen um, across various business owners, right? Um, in, in 2020, if there was one thing that you, one tool that you would suggest they start with, what would that be for 2021? Um, I have a download, and if someone wants to email me, I'm happy to give it away. Uh, it's free. It's a template. It's part of the EOS toolkit, um, and it is a document, and it's a template, and all it says is, what are your goals for this year? But in order to get to what are your goals for this year, you have to answer why did you create your business? What is your sweet spot? Why are you unique in your industry? What is your 10-year goal? What is your three-year goal? And then you get to what your one-year goal is. So I, I would say my, my one suggestion is I love, I love that you're doing goals. Don't stop doing that. Let's make sure you do the work prior to the goals so that when you get to the one-year goal, you can see it. You can taste it. It's in your hands. It's in your grasp. And your leadership team knows about it and they can visualize it too. And when you can have your leadership team and you on the same page, it's just, it's right there. You can almost touch it. And so uh, even if, even if you are a solo entrepreneur, um, I do this exercise with solo entrepreneurs too, or I'll send them the, the template and uh, they'll fill it out and we'll just go back and challenge each other with it. And it's uh, it's a fun exercise. I, I love that. I think that's a great way to start off 2021 um, to, to figure out why you're doing what you're doing and the goals, um, the goals to support that. So why don't you tell me, um, you know, first quarter of the year, what's, what's that like for you? What do you have going on coming up over the next couple of months in your world? You know, um, you, you've hit on a lot of really good stuff, Carl. And um, a lot of business owners that are out there are not doing the fundamentals or the basics. And that's what EOS is, right? EOS is just follow this template, paint by numbers approach to how to run a business. You answer all these questions. My goal is to teach 50 companies who've never heard about EOS about EOS. And I'm going to do that by 3-1 of 2021. So I'm on an education campaign. I'm doing public speaking engagements. This is a great way to get uh, the information about EOS or entrepreneurial operating system out to your audience. Um, I'm not sure. I've done uh, local community events as well, where we're doing education sessions, um, different sort of applications like clubhouse, which is a new app doing a communication on that to try to get the voice out about EOS, because there's no reason for entrepreneurs to struggle with the basics of running their business, right? That should be the simple part. They need to focus on their business. Um, and so I'm doing that one, pr one promotion thing I'm doing this year also for the right, uh, law firm or CPA firm. Um, I'm going to be doing a, uh, pr a discount where uh, they only pay 21% of a full one year implementation. That means 79% off. No, that, that, that's fabulous. And I can think of a couple of business owners that are in that scaling mode and, and this would help them improve the value of their business hopefully get them some more vacation time this year. So as people get the vaccine, they can spend more time with their family. So I think uh, I'm going to be making some introductions and, and, and get folks really focused on learning how to work more on their business and learning more about EOS. So how would folks get in contact? What's the best way to get in contact if folks want to talk with you? You can always, uh, I'm always available via email. You can go to my website and on my website, you can click a link and you can reserve 30 minutes with me. Um, and so my website is www.provisus, P-R-O-V-I-S-U-S, partners.com. You can go there. You can email me. You can uh, get in touch with me however you want. If you want the free template, the free download, email me and say, I heard about this on Capital Sage. Can you send me the document? I'll send it to you. There's no strings attached. 
Um, if you want to, I'll sit back and even challenge you on some of the stuff you put in there and be uh, sort of like uh, go back and forth and refine some of the thoughts that you've got. It's fun. That'll, it's be, fun that'll be fun. We could also include that uh, on on the website and, and show notes um, so folks can get in touch um, with, the, um, with you as well. But um, Brian, I want to thank you. Um, everyone, Brian Salka, um, Salka, he's an EOS implementer with Provisus Partners. And, you know, getting the right coach and having the right advisor to help you through your entrepreneurial journey is really critical. Um, you don't want to burn out before you really scale the business and, and be able to enjoy the, the efforts of your early year success. And figuring out the role you need to play through the journey and picking up the skills that you and your organization needs to continue to grow uh, and thrive is a really important gift you can give yourself in 2021 after what, what must have been for many people a crazy 2020. So Brian, thank you for coming out and sharing. Thank you for the challenge you're taking on uh, and getting people aware on, on some of these things uh, that, that'll help them and their businesses. Carl, thanks for what you and Rico do for our community and Peace Street Corners is better for it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate Brian. it. Appreciate well, it. Um, I'd like, uh, uh, again, this is uh, Carl Barm with Transworld Business Advisors of Atlanta Peace Street. Um, we have business advisors that work with small business owners in the community. We help them on exit planning and when they're ready to sell their business, we help people that want to acquire businesses, how to do that successfully. And when we're not doing those two things, we try to get out there and arm business owners with knowledge, information, resources to help them be successful and grow their business so they can leave a legacy for their family and they can hopefully feel feel pride in what they've built. Um, Rico, we have we are we are continuing on our journey. So 2021, we've got a lot more episodes coming this year. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've got going on? Sure. Before I get to that, I just want to thank Brian again. It's amazing how I'm a small business owner and dealing with Carl, who's a trans world business advisors and, and someone like Brian. Those are the type of people that I would need, certainly. Set my goals, be able to understand where I want to be when I exit my business and, uh, and to be able to grow what I have. Because even now, I mean, there are people going out there starting new businesses in their late 50s because of COVID, because of downsizing, because of all sorts of things going on. So lots of opportunities out there. Um, and, you know, just like me, I mean, I started Peachtree Corners Magazine. I think it's been about two years now almost. So we're working on the next issue. This is last issue. Uh, we did Faces of Peachtree Corners. Uh, covered 20 different people that are important to this community in a variety of ways. Uh, this next issue that we're doing is about faith and sports uh, and other articles about dealing with uh, the redevelopment authority that the city of Peachtree Corners is standing up uh, to do further development in parts of the city uh, and a variety of other types of articles. So, you know, feel free, always contact me if you have an interesting story. We could always look at that. Uh, but look for this brand new issue coming out the first week of February. And if you're looking for video production, social media, content marketing, Mighty Rockets is my company. You could go to MightyRockets.com or you can just email me at Rico, R-I-C-O, not like the copier, at MightyRockets.com. That'll get you there. Uh, and the last thing I just want to re-mention again, Hargrave Fiber. It's been a great sponsor of these family podcasts that we do, including Peace Free Corners Life. Um, so check them out. They're providing the Hargrave Economic Stimulus Plan to people in Peachtree Corners, companies specifically that are small to large companies. You could go to hargrave.com forward slash business forward slash economic stimulus with a hyphen between those two words and check out their offer for one year free business and internet phone service. Can't miss that. That's, That's what fabulous. So. That, that's what makes Petrie Corners, um, Georgia, special. Um, we're here to support families in the community. We're here to support um, the institutions like schools and, and the police force and the local governments and so on. And we're here to support businesses. And so um, Capitalist Sage is here to share 
um, knowledge, introduce you to your, to your neighbor, to your local business owners, and help people put them on a path for success over the long term. And so we're going to continue to bring you episodes and just want to thank everybody for their support over the years with for Capitalist Sage, and we'll continue to provide you with new episodes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.